As people head back into work, employers must take precautions to make sure their employees are safe. Jonathan Bell is an employment attorney, small business expert, and founder of Bell Law Group. And he's here to tell us how businesses are transitioning. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. So with the coronavirus threat, it's still out there. Can employers mandate COVID-19 tests before employees can return to work? Well, the short answer is yes. Uh, the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, actually just updated its guidance on April 23rd, explaining that employers may now screen for COVID-19. And the reason they made that decision is because the virus will pose a direct threat to the health of others. That's the threshold you have to meet to look for the exception to the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Now understand that the test provided must actually test for an active virus. So you can't test for antibodies because just knowing somebody had it in the past will not pose a direct threat to the health of others. So you gotta uh, test for an active virus. Now other things remain into play too. They have to be kept uh, confidential. If it's an hourly employee, you have to pay them for that time. If someone's positive, you can't disclose who is positive. Just if that person has been in touch with other people as well, you could interview those people. Right, so there's a lot of legal obligations involved there that employers need to consider before they ask their employees to get tested. And, and do employees have the right to ask, um, you know, about health history? Uh, not health history. That would violate the Americans with Disabilities Act. So just active testing for the virus. You could do a, a test for fever, um, uh, which, like I said in the past, wasn't allowed. It just rises to that threshold. So you got to be careful with the types of questions you ask to make sure you don't go too far or else you're going to open yourself up to a lawsuit. Right. It's, it's definitely a de delicate situation. So what steps should businesses take when they're starting to bring their employees back? Well, the testing is a good idea to protect your employees, to potentially protect your customers. You need to do it on a non-discriminatory basis. So you should really be testing everybody or nobody. You should try to have them uh, sign consent forms where possible. And then you should have certain guidelines in place. If someone tests positive, what will it take for them to come back to work? Are you going to wait two weeks? Are you going to wait one week? Are you going to subject them to a retest? and things of that nature. You also have to be aware that sometimes there are false positives or false negatives. So they, so that has to come into play. You should also have a regulation if someone refuses to get tests and you could warn them that, that they may not be able to work and you're not gonna allow them into the workplace. And what do you think the workplace is gonna look like when people return to the office? I think it depends on the business. If you get away with having a part of your staff work home at times, I think it's a good idea to do that. Uh, at least preliminarily until the vaccine comes out. You can see, you know, how this virus responds to the summer and therefore the fall. Uh, if that's not a possibility, you have to engage social distancing. You might have to change the dynamics of the workplace by inserting plexiglass, uh, requiring employees and customers to wear masks. I mean, that's, that's a no-brainer. That should absolutely be a requirement in every uh, work situation. All right, Jonathan Bell, employment attorney, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.